Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we're going back to when I was a kid. I used to love reading those choose your own adventure books. I'd get lost in the stories and loved seeing how the different choices played out. But back then they were all just big walls of text. Now Van Ryder Games is soon releasing five books in a series called Graphic Novel Adventures. And these are unlike any game books I've ever seen before. Now while they may conjure up those memories of those classic choose your own adventure books that maybe you read as a child as well, these graphic novels offer a refreshing departure from those big walls of text. They all have gorgeous art that draws you in much further and even have some hidden clues in them. It's kind of like reading a comic book, going from pain to pain, but then deciding which page to go to next so you actually become an active participant in the stories that unfold in these beautifully illustrated graphic novels. Now, I'm going to show you how the shared system of these books work, but also how each of them are unique from one another without spoiling anything for you. So then on the back side, I'll tell you how you can get your hands on some of these because they'll be available pretty soon. All of the books share a similar system as to how they work in general, but they're all unique as well and they all do things a little bit differently. So I'm going to first show you the system and how it works in general. I'm going to use the book Captive for this, but then I'm also going to show you all the unique things about each of these books. So as you read through the graphic novels, there'll be different numbers that you can see. Like in this room, we can see door 202, 89, and 110. So you can go to either of those, and sometimes there'll be text telling you to do other things, like in the bottom left, you can go back to the landing in page 105. So you're getting to choose where you go. You flip to that uh, pane number. Here in the upper left, we see we're in pane number 70. But if we go into any of these other rooms, we're going to turn to that pane in the book and then continue to follow through. Now some rooms might have multiple different ways and things that you can do and some of them might not have anything. They might be dead ends. Now you could be going inside and outside and all different places throughout these books but the numbers still work the same way. Now most of the books also have things that you can hold in inventory. Like in this case we get to take a billiard ball and it's usually highlighted in a different color to draw your attention to it. So in this case we could add a billiard ball for example into our inventory and then we'd go back to 202. And sometimes you'll come across rooms that will have you go to a different spot if it's the first time being there. And then depending on what you've done earlier, it can influence what you do in different rooms later. For example, in here, if you had the flashlight, uh, you could go to 52, but otherwise you have a couple of other choices. Now in many of the books, you can see the large numbers like 103 and 74 in the upper right there, but sometimes if you look closely at the pages, you might be able to see things that you didn't see right off the bat, like here in the lower right. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all the books also have a unique thing about them. Like in Captive, for example, you get to create a character sheet. Now these come in the book as well, but you can always download more from the Van Ryder Games website so that you don't have to write into the book. And in this one, you get to actually split up a certain amount uh, of currency, if you will, to strength and dexterity and will, and you get to track your health, you get to track how much time it's taking you, you get to track your inventory and some notes. Now in Captive, you're trying to find your daughter that was uh, abducted and is in this mansion. And so it takes a certain amount of time, and anytime you see one of these sand timers, you tick off the time, and you've got to do it before all the time is gone. And depending on how you set up your strength and will and things, different things will happen depending on how you set them, and sometimes they can go up or down depending on things you see in the book. And of course there's things that might reduce your health, and if you lose your health all the way down, you've got to start the book over. And there's also some puzzles involved where you're trying to figure certain things out to get past different challenges. Sherlock Holmes has four different investigations that you'll be going through and there'll be a place that you're trying to keep score of all of the different investigations. Now you'll start the first one as Watson and in this investigation you'll be going through and you'll be asking different questions to different people and depending on what you ask them you'll go to different pages but you got to be careful because if you ask the wrong questions you might make them upset and you won't be able to question them anymore. Now after that first case, each one after that you get to decide whether you want to be Watson or Sherlock. With Watson it's a little bit easier, you get more questioning abilities and you get some help from Sherlock. And if you're Sherlock you have to use your powers of deduction and it's a little bit harder. And so you have different starting points depending on which character you choose to be in each of the three remaining cases. 
So instead of getting some hints from Sherlock throughout the time, if you are Sherlock, you pretty much have to deduce certain things at different parts of the case. And they're trying to test you to see how much you know at this point, and good or bad things will happen depending on what you think. Now there's different people that you get to go off and talk to, but each of these people only have to do with one specific case, and you kind of learn about them throughout the case, and then you can always visit this page and visit whoever you'd like. And it wouldn't be a Sherlock mystery if there weren't some puzzles involved as well that will help with your final scoring. Lou Garou is a French term, and it translates to werewolf in the English language. And in this book, you're going to be a young apprentice to an apothecary, and you're out of a very important ingredient, so you're being sent out into the cold to go find more of it. Now, you were being attacked by a werewolf, and this hunter was able to kill the werewolf before it killed you, but the werewolf bit you, so now you're a Lou Garou, and so now this person is hunting you the entire game. So you'll get a character sheet, and over the course of the game, you're going to have different attributes for strength and defense, and that will help you as you're fighting different things throughout the game. You're going to have an inventory, a place to keep notes. You're going to have different equipment that you're going to be able to put on as you find it. You may or may not have an animal companion. You'll get some gold. And at the bottom there, you're going to have different experience points. Certain things will allow you to get those, and once you finish a certain level, you're going to be able to level up. But you'll also be tracking hit points and magic points. Now I talked briefly about leveling up once you get enough experience points, but you get to start with one skill point. At the bottom here, you'll see you can be in, start as an apprentice, or as a healer, or a soldier, or a survivor, and you can check that off and you'll get a certain ability. And then as you level up, you'll continue to be able to go up there or go on some other uh, places as well and get different abilities. So you can work up certain tracks, which lead to even more powerful abilities and more things that you could do later in the game. For example, you might come across characters like this, a vampire. They have certain strength and hit points, but it shows you how much XP or experience points earned towards you getting ready to level up. Now to see if you defeat certain things, uh, you get this little spinning shield and you get to rotate this to see what is it going to be, one through six, but you can also roll a die as well. And your goal in this one is simply to survive and it's gonna be hard to do so because people are aiming at you left and right. Now in Tears of a Goddess, you are a young bounty hunter, and you're trying to track down the people that stole the six tears of a goddess. Now here's a sample of some of the art in this book, and one of the first decisions you'll have to make is where to go to start looking. Now you also get a character sheet in this as well. Uh, you start with a certain amount of life, but the cool thing is you get to choose a specific specialty or skill. You could specialize in disguise, weapon throwing, or burglary, and depending on that, it will take your story in different directions throughout the book. Now you also have health potions, three doses of those that give you five more life, and you have a couple of poisons to start with. The femme fatale must be ingested by somebody, but the black lotus you can coat onto blades or projectiles. And on the bottom left there, you have a certain amount of time to complete this. And so anytime you see that symbol on the left, you have to increase your time. And so at certain times throughout the book, you're going to have options to possibly use some of the poisons if you still have them. But there's plenty of danger left and right in this one. You're going to be trying to avoid it. Otherwise, you'll be losing life throughout the book. And at certain parts, it takes a little longer than normal. And in the upper right, you see that time symbol. That's where you tick off some of the time. And there's different puzzles you come across where you'll be able to get through different parts a little bit easier than if you hadn't figured it out. And the specialty you chose at the beginning definitely changes the story. For example, here, if you had the burglary specialty, you'd be able to go somewhere different than if you hadn't. I saved your time for last. Uh, it is obviously a Western theme, but it's also the one that has the most going on and all the different things that you can do in this book. And as you might imagine, you start this book by galloping up on your horse, tying it to the hitching post, and going into the saloon, where you know what typically happens in there. Now this one has a ledger, and there's a lot of different things that you can track on here. Your bank account. Different buildings will be getting you monthly income that you'll add to your bank account each month. Different notes you can take. Uh, you're going to be tracking your population. Certain things will trigger off of those. Uh, you can have esteemed residents, which will help you out. You'll be getting a certain amount of approval, depending on what happens in the game. You'll also be tracking your gold, wanted outlaws, hidden treasures, and visits to town. But you'll also be counting how many jobs you have, how much food, how safe, uh, the healthiness, the education, bullets, horseshoes, and which month it is, because you have 12 months in this book. Now over the course of this book, you're going to be building different buildings, and you start there in the town zone where some are already built, and you can see above and below that there's different zones that you can build in. 
And on the other side of the town, there's plenty of other zones that you'll be building in. Now there's a building registry that shows you a lot of the different things about the buildings, like how big they are, how many squares do they take, what type are they, how many jobs do they uh, create, uh, what is the cost to build it, what's the monthly income, different bonuses, certain requirements that might have to be built uh, before or after it, uh, and the different amount of approval that each of these buildings give you. Now you'll also be able to select a specific end game goal, like building at least five buildings in zone D, or build 15 different buildings, and so on and so forth. And so throughout the book, you're gonna be gathering different weapons and making sure you keep track of all this in your ledger. And you'll be coming across different people that want some specific type of work, and if you have a building for them, you can hire them, which will bring that building in more income. And you might come across different opportunities to buy land, which obviously costs money now, but will allow you to hopefully make more money later. And different things can happen that will allow you to claim victory, but maybe your approval ratings will drop. Uh, and sometimes you might even be losing population depending on what happens when people leave your town. And at certain points of the story, you're going to be able to learn or talk about certain things if you have the ability to do so. Meaning if you have a school, you could talk about a school, but if you don't, you can't. And certain buildings can earn you different rewards, like in this case you'll gain approval if you have any of these buildings. And at the end of the 12th month, you'll score depending on different things that you may have done throughout the game. As you can see from the overview, not only are these beautifully illustrated, but they all have a different look and feel to them. Now even though they're listed for one player, I've had success playing them together with one other person and talking about the decisions together. Now, these are going to be available soon in English and sold in the USA and in Canada around the end of August 2018, and you'll be able to find them at your friendly local game store, at retail stores, as well as online game stores. Now, if you want to learn more, you can click the link below me in the description of this video, and it will bring you to the graphic novel adventure section of Van Ryder Games' website. And this has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.